How's it going, ladies and bruises up? I'm Six Killer. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. Now, uh, at the moment, I think our current mission is to become a horrible racist. But um, cause at least we can figure out some other way to get past that that big racist guy. Because at the moment, uh, I don't know. Measurehead. Yeah, that's the guy. Got to deal with him somehow. Hmm. What is the race enigma? We're dealing with that because we don't have any other... Any other way to do it? Ask around about the tattoos possible meaning. We could do that. Ask him to tell you about the case. We should probably do that. I don't know why that's not already a thing that we're doing. Let's talk to Kim. Yes? Tell me about the case. What do you want to know? Literally anything about it. I can't remember a single thing. <laughs> ah yes, the case brief you missed. Now, I remember. He opens his notes. Brief, yes, that sounds good. Three days ago, the RCM Emergencies Desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. An anonymous caller said that there was a dead body behind the Whirling in Rags hostel cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There is an ongoing labour dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. Does the briefing say the victim was? A security guard or worker of some sort hired by Wild Pines. This was just hearsay from Martinez, of course. We need to find out the truth. Why didn't we know anything about the caller? They didn't identify themselves in any way. Their tone was muffled using a device of some sort. The desk could not identify what the caller's age nor sex. Why hide themselves? There's a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. The Dock Workers Union is the de facto police in Martinez. Now it appears they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. Hold on, and the RCM is? That's us, the Revico Citizens Militia. We're the police in the city. The RCM, or Revico Citizens Militia, is the police force you and him are a part of. A self-organized peace corps of the occupied city of Revico. The RCM operates within a legal twilight. Yes, its authority is rarely questioned. It's super useful to know this. Okay, I understand now. Just to be clear, we're the police officers. It's our job to find the killer. That's the case. Uncover and arrest the killer. Um, if we're from different precincts, why are we on the same case? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a, he considers the phrasing, a pissing competition. What do you mean? You don't know? His eyes narrow. I assumed you were in on it. You know what I'm in on? Retrograde amnesia. <laughs> better still, uh, better still than an imbecilic cop off. Cop off? It's just stupidity. The lieutenant shakes his head. What kind of stupidity? The cop kind. Our precincts can't decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbour. Yours or mine. As if it were some we somehow own part of the city. Typical street gang mentality. We let the union make a mockery of law enforcement here, and now it's come to its natural natural conclusion. So it's a struggle over who runs Martinez. Sort of. Unless a matter of who gets to police Martinez than who has to. It's an orphan district, in other words. I think the dispatch desk just told both our stations about the hanging. There was quite the brouhaha at the 57th, I can tell you that. Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. But he leans in. I assure you, I am not their finest, nor toughest. With 102 cases solved, what I am is least interested in a pissing competition. Someone in your, in your mind hangs a dark green blackboard. There are two columns. One says, cases solved. The other's confirmed kills. Uh, for some reason I thought you had 104 solved cases. Well, technically, the lieutenant says somewhat sheepishly, the official record keeper has been known to double count murder-suicides. A common account accounting gimmick to inflate precinct stats. So you're still a good cop, right? I'm good enough for this case. I'm not here to compete. I came because I had to. My fellow officers, the sergeant in particular, would have made this scene into a circus. What's so special about Martinez? Martinez? Nothing. 
It's just a puddle at the end of some drain pipe. No one cares about this place. They care about sports. Most of our colleagues don't even know how to get here. Nor north of the interchange doesn't exist. A tremble comes over you. Another after effect of ethanol poisoning, perhaps? Feels like leaves do when they rustle in the breeze, somewhere far away, below the turbine. The 41st and 57th. The lieutenant was right. It's not about who gets what's north. It's about who doesn't. Wonder what this is about me, that I was sent by my station. Hmm, he raises an eyebrow. Thinking it best to let you make the next move. Um... Let's gonna leave it unspecified. The silence carries. Okay, enough of the competition then. Tell me something else. Yes, it's a wholly pointless matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. Oh, here we go. Logic, formidable. Why did the 41st send me? Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight Precinct 57. Yeah, that makes more sense than the other stuff I thought of. I just, just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late wearing piss-stained disco garb. You weren't sent here to whip. Kim, what if my precinct sent me here on this case because I'm a fuck-up? Like, as a joke? I've considered it. His voice somber. So it's true. It would be immensely ugly of them, not to mention unprofessional. But I also think it's somewhat unlikely. Why is that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, who polices Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time, we can't decide who gets Martinez. I think, yes, both stations would prefer to win. You really see me as a safe bet? Safe? No. But you're old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We're only just started working together. So I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. Oh, he's a good man. So no, I don't think they said he was a joke. And even if they did, they're in for a surprise. I think you should know I can't remember anything. No response, he just arches his brow. He's having trouble processing it, believing it even. I really don't remember anything. There was drinking involved. <laughs> Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? What should I concentrate on? Try work. The case at hand. It can work miracles. But I'm completely lacking in basic information about even this organization we're in. Can you help me? Fine. <laughs> we should get through the first... this first day first. Off hours begin at 2100. If you're still having trouble then, I can give you an orientation. I'm afraid this is a medical situation. No, let's just move on. Focus on other people's troubles, not your own. That's the relief. Your heart beats twice like a fist. The serotonin deficiency makes your teeth clench. Thank you, oh wise man. The lieutenant blinks, his mouth slightly open, his body motionless. A microsecond passes. Excuse me, I was lecturing you. I shouldn't have. You should consult a medical professional if you feel that you need help. You can use the radio in my kinema to call your stations Lazarus. Okay. All right, let's let's uh, let's 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 go. So he's got a car around here that we can call the station with. He said that earlier. Where is it? Is it this one? I'll call the station. Before before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number fifty-seven. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion, the Corpus Canema motor carriage. Open the door. In the cabin you're welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Pull out the pull-out toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat, and it clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. Oh, I want all of it. Pry bar. Pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. Heavier than you think. Cold and heavy. Like truth. You feel like you're reunited with truth once more. The rubber-handed rubber chain cutters. Oh, we could use that too. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap go the cutters in your hand. Flashlight. It's a robust, weatherproof, 
and, ma and well made. Police issue. Blue. Let's you see things in the dark that would otherwise mi you would otherwise miss. Pick up the radio. The frequency tableau lights up, and a green button labelled Prime Line grows, glows like a feline eye, and then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Hi, Alice. This is the officer from 41st Precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. This is Officer Alice Dimitri, Dimitri Precinct 57. How may I assist you? The voice replies on the radio. Could you connect me to the 41st Precinct? I have something I need to report. I was told I need to connect to my station. The 40... Oh, no. We'll do the first one. Just a second, officer. She puts you on hold. The static crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His rattly voice is oddly familiar. 102, 105. This is 41st. Come in. Over. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop. And cops know relay code. 104, station 41. We've got urgent business. Over. 10-4, message received. 10-5, relay message. What's your status, over? Just reporting in, over. 10-18, state your message, sir. I need to report my badge missing. 10-9, over. My badge. I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. 10-4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need a 10-10-22, the captain. Over. 10-22, the captain? That sounds bad. Bad and scary. Like being called to the headmaster's office at the school. Is it him? A dry voice asks in the background, what does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Say nothing. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen, who do you think? It's Officer Dick. She tries to speak through laughter. Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It is the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. <laughs> Defend yourself immediately. They're laughing at you. Mm. Do I have to? No, can we just move on? I don't want to I want to get it reported and be done with 10-4 I hear you officer. I'm just gonna make a note here that you're in pursuit of your misplaced badge over Fuck me Mac. Okay, come here. You gotta hear this. Dick Mullen lost his badge. <laughs> What's going on? Super cop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge, he lost his goddamn fucking badge. <laughs> Enough of this now, I have other things to discuss. 10-9, come again. I didn't get that over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. The speaker gasps for air. Ask him if he lost his gun too. The room roars with laughter. I better not tell them I lost my gun too. Sergeant Tarzan wants to know if you've lost your gun too. Over. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Convinced that he didn't lose your gun? No, of course I didn't lose my gun. He says he didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I don't even want to imagine the poor prick who has to relay that kind of news to the captain. Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it fast. You can't have some gangbanger running around with it. We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. Do you need further assistance? Actually, I've lost my gun too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in dire need of financial assistance. Ten four, I hear. But I don't have the authority to grant your request, but what does he want now? He's asking for money. Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that arsehole anything, he's just gonna drink it all. Alright, the operator turns back to. That's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Over. It's paramount to the investigation that you grant me more money. He says it's an important to the case. He isn't getting a red cent. You can tell him that. Request tonight, sir. Over. Please, I'm begging you here. I don't even have a place to sleep tonight. He says he's in trouble. Doesn't have a place to sleep. Well, I guess he'd better crack the case before sundown then. Okay, I heard you. No funds. Anything else, sir? Um, let's just uh, end that there. Roger that. 10, 10 Over and out. The static ends with a loud click and everything is silent again. Alright, alright, alright. That's not bad though, we got some tools. I kind of want to turn off this uh, racist advanced theory thing. Can I stop that? Because I think we might be able to get him down with the tools without having to resort to that kind of uh, desperation. 
Hey, what's in here? There are bottles inside. You can pick them up if you had a bag. Huh. Hello, who are you people? I haven't been over here. Who are you? Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. Hello. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. They're not. What's your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register and organising the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts her eyes wide, as if recalling something. Feel free to stop and browse our wares. Are you standing out here in the cold because... I'm signalling that the store is open, she nods eagerly. Otherwise people might not know. They'd miss out on crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Such a good trooper you are, already learning the value of hard work. I should have a word with the store owner, maybe? Oh no, sir. I'm happy to help mum by luring in customers. She stands upright and smiles like a little soldier. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep me warm. Should you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help mum keep this place running. Isn't school more important than this? Mum says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mum says a proper work is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. How's business going? Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being... She looks over her shoulder. Cursed. Cursed in what way? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever thrived here, sir. That they all go... She looks for the right word. Bankrupt? Exactly. They've been doing fine so far. I don't think curses are real. They shouldn't be. But they seem real. Anyhow, they say these grounds are doomed for business. There must be an economic reason for this. One could say that entire economies are doomed, while they tend to crash every once in a while. It's just a regular trading and selling of things, child. It doesn't work out for most people. They're not doomed, but your mother should learn from their mistakes. Let's go with that one. Of course, sir. Um, she doesn't know what to say. What is this crime business? Crime fiction. It's about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or private detective who's trying to solve a case, catch criminals. Okay, I get it. Crime murder gets the people going. Mm-hmm, she tots. And it's kind of like a puzzle, too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. I'm a policeman myself, by the way. You don't look much like a policeman. She examines you, as if to find something policeman-like. Huh? Well, what does a cop look like, then? Didn't mean to offend you, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh, it's just you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to a book cover, on which you see a strapping Vesper Time officer. He stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. Um, let's go. It's not your body that's important in police work. Anyway, it's your... Head, yes. No, your resilience. Not head, child. Heads. Flexibility, there are a million different people out there, and you got to get in their heads. Sometimes you got to be the killer to catch the killer. Grit, a total risk disregard for personal safety. you got to take the pain. This Mullen guy looks like he's he'd run to his mum. Ain't got no balls. Let's go with that one. I like that. She looks at the cover illustration and frowns. That's a bit childish. <laughs> a dick with no balls. Bam. Mullen's no real deal. He's got nothing on me. No, it's too much. I don't want to say that to a little girl. <laughs> yeah. You forgot the subterfuge. You're saying this out loud. She raised her eyebrow. Say what, sir? Uh, never you mind. Either way, I'm not impressed with this Mullins guy. You don't have to be, sir. She smiles mischievously. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. <laughs> Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. The cover image of Dick Mullins seems to stare at you with harsh disapproval, like in the books. Ooh, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm going to do something now. <laughs> okay, bye. I'll talk to your mum later. At the moment, I'm going to try and get this body down with these new tools we got. I'm sure they'll be handy somehow. We got the chain cutters. If we can get up there. Hmm. Expect the belt. We've done that already, but we need to see if we've got anything we can use. 
Okay, no, this this is all old stuff. Airlifting, yeah, yeah. Hmm, maybe I can't do anything. The lips of the corpse are swollen. Preposterously. They're also silent. You have no idea why you just said that. Hmm. Maybe we can't do anything now. Maybe it's too late. Oh, we got a skill point too, don't we? That we can spend. Let's have a look. Do we, we have a point to spend, right? I believe. Yep, we do have a skill point. What should we, uh, what should we put up? Or should we wait until we need something? Hmm. Maybe we should wait until something comes up that we actually need to boost something. I don't know. Maybe we can get around this side. What's in here? Trash container. The trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says whirling in rags. Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. How do we get the lock open? We could use a pry bar, the one you took from my motor carriage, or... Did someone say pry bar? Fuck yeah, pry bar! <laughs> pry bar, pry bar. Your palms yearn its cold touch to grasp it once more, as you've done many times. Or, Lieutenant? Oh, we could ask for a key from the manager of the Whirling and Rags. He probably has one. He might also have information. This is better than the pry bar idea. Ask the manager? Bullshit! Go straight for the pry bar and pry this baby wide open. 3%? That's not going to happen. Alright, Whirling and Rags it is. Let's go see if we can find a way into this, uh... Into this place. So which one's Whirling and Rags? That's, uh, this place, isn't it? This is Whirling and Rags, right? Yo! Can I help you? Is the trash container up back yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling and Rex. Thanks for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out, that's why. And the neighbours too. They put their trash here and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs inside you. I wonder what this feeling is. Prodded him to find out. We need those keys. What do you need them for? It concerns the case. The lieutenant's voice is harsh and sudden. Please cooperate. He takes the keys from under the counter and hands them to you. Just bring them back once you're done, please. Oh, by the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. Absolutely in the question. First we need a sad banger. Then we, <laughs> then we sing this place to shit. Your body is ready, sir. Alright. We'll be back after we check this uh, rubbish bin. Oh, we can go in there now. I'm having fun just walking around talking to people. The conversations, man. I mean, this game is all about the conversations, though, wouldn't it? The conversations are fantastic. And everything's interactable, pretty much. It's crazy. Open the padlock with key. With a well-oiled crack, the lock pops open. Should it be possible to simply raise the lid? Don't, maybe you shouldn't. What's this? Just a feeling, a warning from some part of you. No, open it. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time, the lieutenant peers in. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Look under the box, under the boxes of carton? You see milk, an egg rest with one broken egg in it, some pasta wrapper. Picking up the famil the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. The box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Soliel cereal. There are basic pasta packages below and turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Pick up the rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. Grab them. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes. 
The lieutenant smells them. Cadaver and odour is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when they were still in early stages of decay. The lieutenant produces a black ba plastic bag marked evidence from his pocket. Drop them in here, officer. Bag the trousers. Kim quickly searches the jeans. Guitar marked blue jeans. Pockets empty, or emptied. He wore them with a belt too. A wide belt. The loops appear stretched, but... He looks into the container. The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in here? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. Reach for it. A drab long sleeve shirt, olive covered, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. Bag the shirt. This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. He nods to himself. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just a kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug catches your eye. But other than that, a thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. Alright, we should go to Gate again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. Could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning out the yard. Or that one. He nods towards the red-haired boy behind him. I'd advise against confronting that fools. You think someone from the Whirling might have been involved? Maybe. Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash, the lid was locked, and this establishment has the key. It's just a small, loose thread. The lieutenant nods and looks back in the trash container. Can we search the rest? It's just organic waste. Cold and slimy in your hands. Apple and potato peels mostly. Unidentified sludge. And the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey. But wait, what's this? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out of the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. Pick it out. Damaged ledger. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out the forms and notes. Written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? I don't know what this is. It's... Look, he points to the clipboard. This plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You even have got an autopsy form here. A miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. If you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? It's been cramping my style. It has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I needed to lose it for the greater bloodletting to begin. <laughs> oh my god. I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore, so I threw it away. So I'm from, from the whirling through it in the trash? I don't know. I'm boring. Rather not talk about it right now. Must be cramping my style. Officer, oh, so this is an official piece of paperwork. It probably contains notes on numerous ongoing investigations and could even list undercover operatives, informants. I suggest integrating it into your style for all our sakes. Oh no, man, sounds like an order. I don't take those. I see, yes, you're what we call a badass, aren't you? <laughs> he makes little quotation marks around the words, indicating he is unsure of his of its actual badassery. Wow, went off script there. Getting your ass handed to you. You shouldn't go picking fights if your rhetorical, <laughs> rhetorical facilities haven't hadn't suggested it. Sorry about it. Tell me, does your badass see more in there, or are we done here? The lieutenant peers into the trash. Soggy cartons and rags look back at him. Oh yes. And it would be also be appropriate to start taking notes on the case. It's what cops do. Some items, such as the ledger you found, are interactable. Go into your inventory and find the interact tab and read your paperwork. The mug, I'm getting the mug too. Pick out the broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. An antique? Only in its social sensibility. Hmm. The man briefly glances at the mug then returns to his, his sight to the trash. The container sounds a muffled gong. There's one thing off the list. The lieutenant sounds relieved. I think we got it all. Hmm. Alright, so we got a... Uh, interactables. Dude, we got so much crap here. How do we actually interact with it? Or is that just when you click on it that interacts with it, or what? Oh, I see. The tattoos. We've done that already. Oh, no, we haven't. An intricate web of blue lines stretch across the torso. I remember that. Looks like a map of the stars. That's right. All right, let's read this ledger then. It's a ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hang from the plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. The sand display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. <laughs> Anything else? 
There's a piece of toilet paper. Or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper. Desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. Inspect the toilet paper? It's just toilet paper. Stick it to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Leave it there. It's cool. Take it off. Still wet. The toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. What we have to do now is shake it off your finger and voila! The legend now looks marginally better. Um, inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are only, the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tie worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your finger across the alum, aluminium. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangle, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice this before. Hey, Lieutenant, what's this? Point to the sticker. What? He's lost in his own notes. It takes a moment for him to see him. That thing? It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to the RCM property. How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Like, for example, all RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. Ooh. Cool. We can check that out. Okay. He returns to his neatly kept notes. Inspect the white papers. Not exactly white, they're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolour patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines, forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, Case files, commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organised and extremely dense, if most alleg mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of the investigations dating back to January 51. This year. The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. There are at least 20, maybe 30 cases. Undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You've attempted two cases a week on average. Um... Is two cases a week a good case, Lloyd Lieutenant? Huh? He raises his nose from his notes. Two complex cases to undertake is a lot. Yes, you really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it unless you start making mistakes. Two cases a week appear to be my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure if I completed them, though. Two? He raises both eyebrows. That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you were making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes. That's okay, he nods, then turns back to his own case files. We all make mistakes. There was a mention of a naming convention here. Yes, it apparently employs a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has a case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might even say. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Oh my, and they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called The Next World Mural, another The Square Bullet Hole Murders, another yet The Unsolvable Case. The guy's on a couch in an unexpected location, and the murder at the hooker parlor, <laughs> even the rare article-free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. You like this grimy murdering, don't you? <laughs> Wish there was one about a drug den. You love those. Gets the blood pumping. No, you don't. You're a human measuring instrument. Almost entirely intellectual. My cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric officer precinct time of arrival scene? No, I mean a non-numeric one with titles. Oh, you mean the titular. Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM. Right after the revolution when the organization had little idea how to do any do things, it persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have a case number... Na a, named a case the square bullet hole murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one, he peeks in his notes, the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. The death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. He smiles. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. Alright, we're going to close those. Well, I'll read more of those later, but we need to wrap this episode up for now. Because we are way out of time for today. 
Lots more to find out. I'm not. I, I think we're going to find another way past that racist guy. I don't think we have to prescribe to him. I can use the pry bar on him. Boom. Pry bar. Done. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for, watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.